This video is brought to you by Brilliant. You will have heard lots of talk about the EU elections over the past few days, about the rise of the right, Macron's snap election gamble, and the chaos surrounding Germany's AFD. But one region we really ought to take a closer look at is the Nordics. The results of the European parliamentary elections show that Denmark, Sweden, and Finland all went against the grain, with centre and far-right parties actually losing vote share compared to 2019, and left-wing, green and far-left parties all making gains. So in this video, we'll take a look at the EU election results from Denmark, Sweden and Finland, and consider why the left did surprisingly well. Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop and be notified when we release new videos. Let's start with a quick recap of the results, starting with Sweden. According to provisional results, out of 21 seats, 10 went to the left, 3 to the centre and 8 to the right. On the left, two seats went to the left party, which sits in the EU's left group, three to the Swedish Greens, who are in the green group, and five to the Social Democrats, who are, you guessed it, in the Socialists and Democrats group. This meant Sweden had the most left-leaning results of any EU country, giving just under half, or 47.6%, of its total seat allocation to left-wing and green parties. For our skärm, resultatet. Alltså valmyndigheten som sammanställer alla röster. Men där kommer det och det visar att alla partier klarar sig kvar. For comparison, overall left-wing and green parties took just under a third or 31.2% of seats in the chamber. In Denmark, which had 15 seats available, the Green Left Party, which sits in the green group, actually came out on top winning three seats. The Social Democrats came second, winning three seats, and the Green-Red Party, which sits in the EU's left bloc, also won a seat. This meant that, overall, seven seats went to the left, four to the centre, and three to the right, with the remaining seat going to an unaffiliated MEP. In Finland, which also has 15 MEPs, while the centrist National Coalition came first, there was a particularly strong showing by the left party, which came second with 17% of the vote and three seats. Conversely, there was a particularly weak showing by the Finns party, often described in the media as far right, which saw its vote share roughly halved and won just one seat. Overall, seven seats went to the left, three to the centre and five to the right. This put Denmark and Finland a close joint second behind Sweden for the most left-wing results in Europe. So what explains the Nordics' leftward tilt? Well, this is obviously a difficult question, and there will be nation-specific reasons, but there are some common themes. The first is turnout. Turnout across the Nordics was relatively low, especially compared to turnout for national elections, and it's plausible that this helped the left, because left-wing voters, and especially green voters, were disproportionately likely to turn out. For example, in Denmark, the Socialist Green Left Party finished first in the EU election, with a 17.4% vote share, gaining one seat, while only managing 8.3% in the 2022 national election. Similarly, one of the biggest surprises from the EU election was the Swedish Greens leapfrogging the far-right Swedish Democrats into third place, finishing on 13.8%, a huge jump up from the 5.1% they registered in the 2022 general election. This might suggest that left-wing and green voters in these countries care more than those on the right about the European elections. This is something Finns party leader Rika Pura said when trying to explain her underperformance, claiming that Finns voters saw the European elections, if not negatively, then indifferently. The second is the fact that migration, which is a driver of right-wing support elsewhere in Europe, was less of an issue in the Nordics this year. Partly, this is because the Nordics aren't currently dealing with as much of a migration crisis as countries like Italy, France and Germany, but also because migration policy is generally less of a polarising issue in the Nordics, with a general left-right agreement on the need for strict migration rules. For example, the centre-left Danish Social Democrats, who were re-elected in 2022, has pursued a remarkably restrictive migration policy renowned for its strict integration programme and difficult citizenship process. 
Something true is similar in Sweden, where the centre-left Social Democrats have significantly tightened immigration and integration rules, with Kurdish-born MP Lauren Radar saying citizens who are Swedish on paper also have to be, quote, Swedish at heart. The third reason we can see, though, is that Nordic countries have already, in a way, been vaccinated against the far right. In other words, in many of these countries, the far right has already been in government. It's not so much that they've necessarily been ineffective, but rather that they've often failed to deliver on their more radical promises. And participating in coalition governments has apparently undermined their anti-establishment credentials. In Finland, for instance, the Finns control the finance ministry, and they've now overseen 9 billion euros of austerity-esque spending cuts in the past two years. Even if the Finns still talk a tough game on immigration, this has obviously made them less popular. The fourth and final reason is that left-wing parties in the Nordics have some good politicians. In Denmark, the leader of the Green Left, Pia Olsen Dua, is generally regarded as having turned the party's fortunes around since she took over 10 years ago. Similarly, in Finland, Lee Anderson, the leader of the Socialist Left Alliance, is a former minister and presidential candidate, who successfully raised her party's profile and is generally well-liked. Anderson actually received more votes personally than any Finnish candidate has ever received in a European election, outpolling the total candidate list for each of the Finnish centre-left and Green League. So, after all of that, what's left to say? Well, you could say that the three Nordic countries have bucked the trend of the European right, doing well right across the continent, and that's clearly true in a sense. But what the Nordic experience also reminds us of is the fact that the EU is more heterogeneous than the media often suggests, and when we talk about the EU shifting right or the EU's far-right surge, we're often confusing contingent events in a handful of countries with a continent-wide trend. Now, understanding exactly what has or is going to happen here can be a little tricky, requiring you to evaluate lots of information from different, often partial, sources. It would be sensible then to begin improving your critical thinking skills so that you can keep sharp and better understand what's going on. And well, our sponsor Brilliant.org can help you do just that. Brilliant is the online learning platform that's designed specifically to teach you everything from maths, data analysis, programming and AI from the ground up. You don't need a fancy degree or to have dedicated hundreds of hours to studying any of these. All you need is a device with an internet connection and a few spare minutes a day. And with your spare few minutes, you'll learn by actually doing, with Brilliant providing hands-on lessons that let you play around with concepts, a method that has been shown to be six times more effective than just watching lectures. What makes this even better is that this content is created by an award-winning team of teachers, researchers and professionals from MIT, Caltech, Duke, Microsoft and more. You can try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days. Just click on the link in the description. That way you'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription.